In this video, we'll be reviewing Unit 1 for Latin for Americans. In Latin, nouns, which stand for people, places, things, or ideas, have special endings called cases. There are five cases in Latin that we'll learn. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative. They also show number, which means singular or plural. Singular, there is one of it. Plural, there is more than one. And so these endings come at the end. And so femina, meaning nominative singular, compared to femini, which would be nominative plural. And then we have feminon, which is accusative singular, and feminos, which is accusative plural. And so based on whether it's nominative or accusative, will determine its function in the sentence. They can be placed before or after verbs. The word order in a Latin sentence is not as important. But it does show some things, but it can be placed anywhere and not change the meaning of the sentence. Nouns also have gen gender. There's the feminine or there's the masculine. And later on, we'll also learn the neuter. This differs from English nouns. English nouns don't show case. So this is what makes Latin a little bit difficult for English speakers because they're not used to special endings showing case. Often they'll show number between singular or plural, between men and men, puppy and puppies, but their word order is how we determine the function of the sentence. Generally, subjects will come before the verb and direct objects will come after the verb. We don't look at how they're, the endings of the word itself, we look at the placement. This is in English. And gender is usually just what we consider what's called natural gender, and we really don't pay attention too much to gender unless we're using pronouns in English. The nominative case is used for the subject of a sentence. So the subject of the sentence for an active verb is the thing or person that is doing the action. The nominative case can also be used for something called a predicate nominative, which with linking verbs, they'll take nominative on both sides. So for example, Britain is an island, that links the two together, both Britain and Ireland would be in the nominative case. The next case we're going to learn is the accusative case. The accusative case is used for direct objects. Notice both subjects and direct objects are different functions of nouns. A direct object is a word or words that is directly acted upon by the verb. So another use of the accusative case can be used for an object of a preposition, such as odd plus the accusative. We'll talk more about that later. But notice in this diagram here, when the word puella, girl, goes from subject to object, we do an ending change. Latin nouns are grouped in things called declensions. Declensions are groups of nouns that will decline with a similar pattern. The first declension has the endings a, ae, ae, am, a, ae, arum, is, os, is. And so this is something you have to learn and memorize. But most first declension nouns will follow this same pattern. The ending again will tell whether its case is nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, or ablative, or whether it's singular or plural. The second declension has the same cases, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, ablative, singular, and plural, but it has a different set of endings. This is us, i, o, um, o, i, orum, is, os, is. Most nouns in the second declension will follow this pattern. These are another set of endings that you'll have to memorize. In Latin, adjectives, which are words that will modify uh, or describe nouns, are also have cases and numbers. So they will have the same number, gender, and case from the noun they modify. Notice they don't have the, have the same declension. For the most part, the endings will be the same, like in fama bona, a good report, or multi equi, many horses, or parwam suelam, a small force. But not necessarily. When we start learning more declensions and more complicated nouns, they won't necessarily have the exact same ending. But basically, for the for basic Latin, they will almost always agree and be the same. Generally, they follow the noun, except when they show quantity or size. But again, word placement is not that important. And sometimes adjectives don't necessarily have to be right next to their noun. And we'll get to that more later on in, in our review. This compares to English adjectives, which again, they do not change their form to agree with the noun they modify. 
and they usually come right before the noun they modify, making adjectives in English a little easier to use, especially if you're an English speaker. Now we're going to talk about verbs. Verbs in Latin have what's called person and number. So person is first the person speaking, so this could be singular or plural, which would be the number, I or we. Second person, which is the person who's spoken to, which would be you in both the singular and the plural. Or the third person, the person spoken about, which in the singular is he, she, or it, or they in the plural. Verbs in Latin always show person and number. And often, the, a pronoun is admitted and it's built into the verb. For example, amo can just mean I love by itself. And amant by itself means they love. So in Latin, there's no need for an extra pronoun. Also in Latin, we'll learn that many of the helping verbs are included in the main verb, and it's not necessary to write that extra one. In Latin, also, verbs agree with their subject in person and number. So again, an agricola is third singular, and you also have serbus, so you have a third singular, third singular. Two singulars make a plural, and so then you have a verb that's also third plural. In English, however, verbs... Some verbs show person and number, but not all. And usually sub subject pronouns are regularly used, like he, she, it, or we. Or in Latin, they're often admitted. And the verbs agree with their subject and person and number. So often on your English paper, you might get your English teacher writing subject-verb agreement. That means that you have a plural verb and a singular subject, or vice versa. Just like nouns, verbs have special endings that will tell you their person and number. This is the inflection at the end. If you have a verb that ends in O or M, most likely it's first singular, meaning I. A verb that just ends with an S would be second singular U. A verb that ends in a T would just be he, she, or it. A verb that ends in MUS would be first plural we. A verb that ends in TIS would be second plural, you plural, and the NT would be for third plural, they. This is how a verb conjugates in the present tense. So, porto, portas, portat, portamus, portatus, portant. See how the stem stays the same, and then what we'll add is a stem vowel, which will vary based on conjugation, which are similar to declensions, but they're groups of verbs. And then just the ending changes, because it changed the person and number. So porto is I carry, I am carrying, or I do carry. All are correct translations. Then it goes to portas. You carry, you are carrying, you do carry. And so notice how as we go down, when we change the ending, we change the subject or the pronoun that is doing the verb. Now we're going to review the nouns that you've learned in this unit. Notice that the the nouns that end in A all belong to the first declension. That's not always the case, as we will learn later, but in this unit that's true. And their second part would be AE. AE would be the genitive singular. And that is true for all the nouns that end in A. Most of the first declension is feminine. So if you're guessing, the gender of most of these is feminine. There's one major ex exception, and that's Agricola. Agricola, A-E, masculine. Most, again, most nouns of the first declension are feminine. There are a few exceptions that we'll go over, and Agricola is one of them. Now look at the nouns that end in U-S. These are all masculine, and then their genitive singular is I. So, carus, equus, and servus will all be I masculine. Here's a list of adjectives you learned in this unit. They all end in us, but remember, it's a, um. So the us will be used for masculine nouns, to modify masculine nouns. The a will be used to modify feminine nouns. And the um will be used to modify neuter nouns when we learn them. Because remember, adjectives agree with the noun they modify in case, number, and gender. Here's a review of the verbs we learned. We learned a few special forms here of erot and errant and est and sunt. This comes from the verb sum, which is irregular, and we'll learn more about that later. And then we learned about the first conjugation. All these verbs belong to the first conjugation, and they are followed by principal parts. There's three remaining, and for the first conjugation, 
they are always are, awi, and autus. That's important to remember. Here's a review of the adverbs you learned in this unit. Adverbs will modify verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. So we have mini may, not at all, nunc, now, ubi, where, when, sick, which is uh, yes, and non, which means not. And lastly, we learned uh, conjunctions in this chapter. Conjunctions are words that will either join clauses or other adjectives, verbs, or nouns together. And so we have et, which is and, quod, which is because, and said, which is but.